Hey everyone, this is Elliot here at OpFocus. I am a senior consultant and today we're going to be discussing uh, the validation of zip codes in your Salesforce instance. Uh, very important topic when it comes to data quality, anything regarding geographic location or geolocation in your instance. Um, so today we're going to go over how you can prevent your users from ever putting in a bad zip code, whether you in the US or Canada. Um, so follow along. This is also useful when it comes to any sort of distance or locale querying, um, lead assignment or territory assignment based on location. Um, so yes, yeah, today my, mine is going over um, a pretty easy way to incorporate validation on zip codes. Um, so, you know, Salesforce does offer like Google autofill and those types of things where it'll kind of put, on, put in the address for you as you start typing. Um, but in a lot of organizations, especially those where they're doing uh, using tools like Map Anything or these geolocation um, based service areas, having an accurate zip code is is pretty important. Um, and you know, users who are typing in an address, they might put in four digits instead of five. They might get the the zip code wrong in general. Um, so there's a pretty easy way to to manage this um, that doesn't actually take a lot of effort. And then once you have this in place, you can kind of start branching off and use this in, in other areas. Um, so there is a function that you can use specifically in uh, validation rules called VLOOKUP. Um, I don't know how often it's used. I, I feel like it's um, overlooked a lot because it's only really used in validation rules. Um, so essentially what you can do is you can have a custom object where um, you can have like a, a, a database or a table, or you can even reference another object that you actively use. And when someone's inputting data, um, instead of doing a query and um, preventing um, using a trigger or something, you can use a validation rule to say, hey, that's not in our database, um, you know, try again. Um, so in this example, I've set up um, a, a basic zip code object um, where I've put in some you know, standard information you get from a zip code. Now, normally you would want to put in an entire zip code database. So you can, you can find these, you can purchase updated ones. If you have a tool like Map Anything, they usually provide that for you and install it in your org. And it'll give you things like latitude, longitude, um, the city and the state um, and the zip code. Um, so when you have all that information, it can be really useful. But for this example, really all you need is, is the zip code. Um, and then so on the account object, I've set up this, this uh, validation rule for um, making sure that a record exists with zip, uh, this zip code. So if you look at the zip code here, um, I've just created one zip code, I put in my own zip code. So unless the zip code is ex existed in this object, um, I wouldn't be able to enter any other zip code except for this one. Um, so again, in a real scenario, you would install the entire zip code database for the US or you could probably even do this for Canada or any other countries who have you know a reliable zip code table. Uh, validation rule is very easy. You're just saying look up this object type um, with the name and again we're just matching on the name here zip code name and then you're, you're putting it against billing postal code. Uh, so if I were on this account right now I have it set to my current zip code now, if I were to try to put in any other zip code because I only have one zip code in the database, it's gonna throw an error saying that the zip code is not valid. Um, so this is a good way to kind of ensure that you're putting in right geographical information. You could extend this validation rule to make sure that the zip code they have um, pertains to the state that they input or vice versa or the city or the country, as long as you have the information available on the zip code record. Um, it takes two seconds to write the validation rule. So this can be used. Um, currently the limitation uh, for um, uh, using zip code, or uh, excuse me, VLOOKUP, is it has to reside in a custom object. Um, they're working on getting this available in metadata, but currently you need to use a custom object. So there, there is the limitation there. Um, so this is really just one example of how you could use a zip code table. Um, you could really extend this when you get into a lot of um, complex functionality of um, searching for contacts within a certain zip code or um, doing calculations based on a zip code. What is the radius um, that you're looking for? Maybe you're finding, hey, give me a list of accounts within 25 minute, uh, miles of this zip code. So really the, 
the zip code table could start to be multifunctional based on your needs. Um, but for this example, it's, it's pretty easy to just um, input a, a, an updated zip code table and write a, a validation rule in a couple seconds and you know, kind of enforce your users to put in valid um, geographic locations and you know, make sure that this data is coming in with you know, the quality that would be needed in any sort of geographic um, calculation. That's cool, Elliot. When you were first showing it, I was afraid you were going to say that it would fill in somehow the zip code based on the city. And I know that you know some cities have more than one zip code, but um, this right. isn't filling it in yeah. for you. But it is um, confirming that the zip code you entered not only is in the correct format, but that it actually matches what you have in the database. Right. So I like it. And this, cool. this is also a really powerful, like if you're in flows or you're doing any sort of custom component where you're able to do queries in between screens. Um, I've used this before where someone can type in, uh, in, my, in my previous engagement, um, it was a, in the medical industry. So um, a customer success manager who was speaking with a patient could put in a zip code um, and give the patient a list of physicians, you know, within 20 miles of their area or 50 miles within their area, whatever distance they were willing to, to go. So even when it gets into a lot of custom stuff, um, this just kind of um, expounds on how useful it can be in different scenarios. I'm um, just having that data available. Um, this validation rule is just, you know, the, uh, an entry level um, use case that's, you know, gives immediate effect. Um, but yeah, it can be used in other areas as well. Uh, I, I definitely know it's between uh, 50 and 70,000 records typically um, for the US. Um, it varies based on uh, you know where you're getting your data. Not every zip code is up to up, um, updated every year. Um, you can get them from like the post office or any um, there's different sources so depending on whether you want to pay for one that's consistently updated that you could maintain or if you download one that's a couple years old, it's, it's still pretty safe to do that um, because it's, it's not as frequent that a new zip code gets, gets added. And actually there's a lot of zip codes that exist that are not even assigned to a city. Um, so that, that actually happens a lot where you'll see like zip code 00001, it exists, but it doesn't necessarily belong to anything. Um, and there is the scenario like, um, like we were talking about earlier where technically uh, a zip code could be in two cities or, or two cities could have different zip codes that that happens a lot too. Um, so normally if you're going to leverage this in a good situation, it might be worth it to spend the money to buy a good zip code table. They're not expensive. They go a long way. Um, so yeah, there, there are a lot of records, you know, between 50 and 70,000. So something to keep in mind if you're working in a smaller org who has a, a limit of data. As you start expanding, yeah, it'll get bigger. Um, yeah. yeah, I've even, uh, I've used zip code, um, this zip code table to do um, t custom territory assignment. So uh, I've worked in orgs where, you know, leads are assigned by state. And if you, you have different reps within the same state who are working in different zip codes, um, you could build a flow or a trigger that kind of references this table and would assign territories and clear territories based on the zip code. Um, so if, if your territory assignments are rotating a lot and a zip code gets moved uh, to another uh, assignment, then you, know, you could easily leverage this to do that as well. Um, so really powerful stuff and it's a, basic table, you have like five fields, you have longitude, latitude, city, state, uh, zip code, you know, very easy to maintain, um, but it's, it's pretty multifaceted. 